Why, hello, and welcome to another episode of First Chances with Chance. And in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about interviews. So, I want to say the first time that I got interviewed was, would be for my school's, um, Um, would it have been for like my high school, like the scholarship that I was applying for through the school? Um, unfortunately I did not get the scholarship, so, oh well, I mean I did botch the interview anyways, so yeah. a very competitive scholarship in the first place so I didn't really expect myself to to really get it not even uh, my year the la the year pre prior the year prior to me the my neighbor actually applied for the same um, category in the scholarship and she didn't even get it like it was another school that got it um, I lucked out. I never really had to interview for my first two jobs. I guess you could say that there was like a little interview process for it. Uh, for my second job, the um, the restaurant that I worked at. But it wasn't really an actual like interview interview, if you want to call it an interview. Um... I'm waiting for the day that I get interviewed for a magazine, but... That's neither here nor there. Um, sorry, I was drinking water. If you guys weren't, uh, aren't watching the video portion, and why is my face so itchy? Uh, maybe it's time to clean, to get uh, replace my razor. Um, I did get interviewed at the place by the camera people, the place where they were doing the interview for the scholarship. I did get interviewed by the camera people at the place. Um, it was at one of the colleges that um, is around my area. So I guess the school board decided to do all of the um, interviews that way. I mean, I was pretty nervous. There's not like any denial there. I was pretty nervous about doing an interview because it was my first interview with um, like ever, I want I would say. Um, other than that, it really wasn't that bad besides the nerves. I did know that I botched it at, right after um, because there was a, a slight silence in the room and you don't really want that to happen. You want them to be interested in you. And I guess they weren't interested in me enough. So, I had to start a sent the conversation back up, which is not a, ever a good thing. You should never be glad that you were the conversation starter. Like, oh my god, I brought the conversation back. I totally won them over. In order to win them over, you have to show emotion. I showed emotion. But I didn't win. The only person from my school that won, won, um, I want to say fourth place in the scholarship. So, yeah. And that was in, I want to say, either, it was either sports or TV production. Uh, which, it, or I guess you would say film. Um, so, yeah. 
Um, the only actual like job interview that I had would have been with Target, which they were at. Like I interviewed with them twice because I had to go back. Like I applied during the winter, and I guess I was doing a. Would have been interviewing for Starbucks seasonal. No. I guess they didn't like my interview because I didn't get the job at that time. But of course I'm working at Target now so y'all can fuck off. Like the same guy that I interviewed with wasn't even there when I interviewed the second time around for the front. Like at the registers and everything. Of course I didn't like what I interviewed for, which I still don't. Like, they already know. Kind of. Um. Car attendant. Does. Like, that job does not get enough respect. Like, the people that are car attendants do not get enough respect from everybody else. And it's kind of stupid. Like, literally when I would open up in the morning, I don't know how many times I had to call on the walkie to get the cart doors unlocked. Like, if you know that you're unlocking the doors for the guests to come in, then you need to unlock the doors for the, to, um, with the cart. Like, it's literally, they're literally right there, just unlock them. Like, it's not like a guest is going to open up the, the door and take a card out. No. But when I, I mean, obviously when you interview, you, the things you say are what you think that the interviewer is wanting to hear, obviously, which does benefit you, but also... Also, it can um, make the interviewer not see your true self, which means that you're closing yourself off to the interviewer. I mean, yeah, granted, you are possibly interviewing for a job. So, and if you really want that job, you're going to go out of your way to make the interviewer want to hire you. So, that is one thing, but I don't always recommend it. You always want to do your research on the, the job that you're doing or that you're applying for. Just so you see, like, maybe surveys or reviews of how, like, people of that have done their, that job. Um, uh, like, what they've said about it or like even that specific location like you want to see reviews like do i really want to be working here type of thing like how are the managers treat their employees type of thing like it goes a lot like research now would go a long way for me because like when i do find a new job like the job that i want to go for next would probably be with the school board as possibly a substitute teacher because all you need is your high school diploma from what I heard. But you, what I would need to do is do research on like schools that need substitute teachers. Which unfortunately wouldn't be until the fall semester. Which I'd only be taking two classes so I'd be fine. I could do that. I mean I wouldn't be able to do those online. I would just have to have a specific like schedule that I would be subbing. Don't even do like like yeah the teacher will have them pass out a uh, worksheet but that's pretty much it. Um, another job that I've gotten offered is um, tutoring, 
which on for it only gets paid like thirteen fifty an hour. But that I wouldn't really do it for the money. I would do it for like happiness. Like if I'm happy there, then so be it. Like I don't care how much I'm getting paid. I'm happy where I'm at. But if I'm unhappy, then literally all I'd be going there for is the money. Like, let's say I'm not happy making podcasts anymore and I'm just doing it because, like, I, I don't think I'd ever be unhappy doing podcasts. Especially stuff like this that I've been through that I'm trying to, like, inform you guys about. I don't think I'd ever be unhappy per se. I would just get like overwhelmed and feel um, overworked. Like days that I'm filming, I don't really do anything else besides maybe go ride my bike. I don't work. I just have my the day set specifically for me to film. Like usually I'd have a uh, set day for filming the YouTube uh, video and then a set day for it to film the podcast. But lately I've been having to go in to work with my mom at the cafeteria, which is also where I got the um, offer for uh, tutoring. Um, which they said that but hopefully next year they'll do it, like the tutoring during the day. But unfortunately I'd have to take the bus home. And I don't really want to be taking the bus home because I'm taking more money out of the account. But that doesn't matter because I'm making money. Um, other than that, like, besides that, I've now had to combine the filming days together, which is why I ha still have the makeup on from the video that I filmed today. Um, instead of doing a different one, if you guys want to look, if you guys are watching it, it's such a gorgeous look. Um, I know I love it. Um, but other than that, like, you just really gotta do your research. And then, like, figure out, like, mentally, like, where you are physically at and where you are, like, physically and mentally to be able to get another job or possibly even get a, get, like, your first job. But... Let's go ahead and take a break. I will be back with some tips and possibly some tricks to uh, like an article of some stuff in order to help you guys out with a, like a job interview or an interview in general. Um, I know some relaxing medication, like I don't condone medication use like that, um, but Xanax definitely does help with anxiety, which is the baseline of like you being nervous. So, I mean, I'm not telling you guys to, I'm just bringing it up. Okay, stop. We're definitely taking a break now. Uh, and I will be back. So the, <sighs> Mike was not plugged in. And I hope now the audio sounds a lot better. Um, but back to like interviews and stuff, I'm not going to pull up the article just yet. Um, <coughs> the interview with the school, I, that's actually what, how I met Jeffrey was with the scholarship opportunity. Um, neither of us got the scholarship. But, I mean, it was worth a try, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I'm not high, I swear. Today is 420 when I'm filming this. I promise you I am not high or anything. I, I just have, like, a lot of energy, okay? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I have crackhead energy today. I don't know why, though, because I haven't taken anything. Really, I haven't taken anything. I'm just in, like, a good mood. A silly, goofy mood. Ah, that. What the fuck are you on? Like, there's no way that you're, like, not fucking, uh, 
like on something. I promise you I'm not on anything. Like, I promise you I'm not on anything. I just get like this sometimes and yeah. Usually it's not when I'm filming, but I don't know. When I was on that break, I just didn't see the goofy mood. I just, yeah. Sometimes it's uncontrollable. I don't know. I'm just in a silly goofy mood. Silly goofy mood. Okay, um, do I want to talk about anything else? About interviews? Before I pull up this article. Huh. Well, if I think of anything, I will definitely bring it up. So let's go ahead and pull up this article. So tips for before the interview. Um, so it's an article from Indeed, 21 Job Interview Tips. How to get, how to make a great impression. Tips for before the interview. One, start by researching the company and your interviewers. Understanding key information about the company you're interviewing with can help you go into your interview with confidence. Using the company's website, social media posts, and recent press releases will provide a solid understanding of the company's goals and how your background makes you a great fit. Review our complete guide to researching a company. How about no? I will not review your complete guide to researching a company. Practice your answers to common interview questions. Prepare your answer to the common question, tell me about yourself and why are you interested in this role with our company? The idea is to quickly communicate who you are and what value you will bring to the company and the role. It's your personal elevator pitch. And again, it says, review our guide to answering top interview questions. No. Tip, you should come prepared to discuss your salary expectations. If you're unsure what salary is appropriate to ask for, visit Indeed Salary Calculator for a free personalized pay range based on your location, industry, and experience. Reread the job description. You may want to print it out and begin underlining specific skills the employer is looking for. Think about examples from your past and current work that align with these requirements. How about the job that you're interviewing for will, um, like how the fuck am I supposed to know if I'm interviewing for a car attendant or cashier? Because it all is under the exact same thing. Target, get your shit straight. Because I, th I really thought that I was interviewing for a cashier. Like, guest advocate. Use the STAR method or STAR method in answering questions. Prepare to be asked about times in the past when you used a specific skill and use the STIR method to tell stories with a clear situation, task, action, and result. Recruit a friend to practice answering questions. Actually, practicing your answers out loud is an incredibly effective way to prepare. Say them to yourself or ask a friend to help run through questions and answers. You'll find you gain confidence as you get used to saying the words. Prepare a list of references. Your interviewers might require you to submit a list of references before or after your interview. Having a reference list prepared ahead of time can help you quickly complete this step to move forward in the hiring process. That is for sure. Be prepared with examples of your work. Doing the during the interview, you will likely be asked about specific work you've completed in relation to the position. After reviewing the job description, think of work you've done in past jobs, 
clubs, or volunteer positions that show you have experience and success doing the work they require. Eight, prepare smart questions for your interviewers. Interviews are a two-way street. Employers expect you to ask questions. They want to know that you're thinking seriously about what it would be like to work there. Here are some questions you may want to consider asking your interviewers. Can you explain some of the day-to-day -day responsibilities this job entails? How would you describe the character characteristics of someone who would succeed in this role? If I were in this position, how would my performance be measured and how often? What departments does this team work with regularly? How do these departments typically collaborate? What does that process look like and what are the challenges you're currently facing in your role? What? I don't understand those last bit of ones. So now is for tips for during the interview. After you've spent time preparing, you can be successful on interview day by practicing these tips. Plan your interview attire the night before. Definitely not what I'm wearing today. That's for sure. That is for sure. If you're speaking to a recruiter before the interview, you can ask them about the dress code in the workplace and choose your outfit accordingly. If you don't have someone to ask, research the company to learn what's appropriate. Bring copies of your resume, a notebook, and pen. Take at least five copies of your printed resume on clean paper in case of multiple interviewers. Highlight specific accomplishments on your copy that you can easily refer to and discuss. Bring a pen and a small notebook. Prepare to take notes but not on your smartphone or another electronic device. Write information down so that you can refer to these details you in your follow-up. Thank you notes. Maintain eye contact as much as possible. For more, visit what to bring to the interview. Plan your schedule so that you can arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. Sorry, my nose is a little stuffy today and I haven't vaped, so I don't know why it's stuffy. I even took a shower before this with peppermint oil, which is supposed to clear up your sinuses. That could be what gave me all this energy. Sorry. Plan your schedule so that you can arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. Map out your route to the interview location so you can be sure to arrive on time. Consider doing a practice run. If you're taking public transportation, identify a backup plan if there are delays or closures. When you arrive early, use the extra minutes to observe workplace dynamics. So before we finish this off, I'm gonna go ahead and take a break. I'm probably gonna eat because my stomach is rumbling and we will be back with the rest of the interview tips. So we still on that cracky energy. Cracky energy. We got that cracky energy still. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So I don't know if I read this one. Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, make a great first impression. So by the way, I'm back. Obviously with the cracky energy. With that cranky energy. I don't know where the energy came from. I didn't take nothing. But that cranky energy. I got cranky energy. I didn't even have a coffee this morning. The fuck? I didn't even drink a matcha this morning. The fuck? I drink one last night though. Yeah, but I slept. Do it. Shut up. So make a great first impression. Don't forget the little things. Shine your shoes. Make sure your nails are clean and tidy. And check your clothes for holes, stains, pet hair, and loose threads. 
Display confident body language and a smile throughout. Like that's gonna help. LMAO, it will. Um, treat everyone you encounter with respect. This includes people on the road and in the parking lot. Security personnel and front desk staff. Treat everyone you don't know as though they're the hiring manager. Even if they aren't, your potential employer might ask for their feedback. The fuck? Like, guests. They might ask for a guest's feedback. That's stupid. Practice good manners and body language. Practice confident, accessible body language from the moment you enter the building. Sit or stand tall with your shoulders back. Before the interview, take a deep breath and exhale slowly to manage feelings of anxiety and encourage self-confidence. The interviewer should extend their hand first to initiate a handshake. Stand, look the person in the eye, and smile. A good handshake should be firm but not crush the other person's fingers. For me, visit everything you need to know about job interview etiquette. Win them over with your authenticity and positivity. Authenticity, huh? You don't want my authenticity. Being genuine during interview conversations can help employers easily relate to you. Showing positivity with a smile and upbeat body language can help keep the interview light and constructive. Respond truthfully to the questions asked. While it can seem tempting to embellish on your skills and accomplishments, interviewers find honesty refreshing and respectful. Focus on your key strengths and why your background makes you uniquely qualified for the position. Tie your questions back to your skills and accomplishments. With any question you answer, it is important that you tie your background to the job by providing examples of solutions and results you've achieved. Use every opportunity to address the requirements listed in the job description. Keep your answers concise and focused. Your time with each interviewer is limited, so be mindful of rambling. Practicing your answers beforehand can help keep you focused. Do not speak negatively about your previous employers. Companies want to hire problem solvers who overcome tough situations. If you're feeling discouraged about your current job, focus on talking about what you've gained from that experience and what you want to do next. Tips for after the interview. When the interview is over, give yourself the best chances of moving forward by doing the following. Ask about next steps. After your interview, it is appropriate to ask either your interviewer, hiring manager, or recruiter about what you should expect next. This will likely be the uh, follow-up email with results from your interview, additional requirements like an assignment or reference list or another interview. Send a personalized thank you letter after the interview. After, ask for the business card of each person you speak with during the interview process so that you can follow up individually with a separate thank you email. If you are if you interviewed in the morning, send your follow-up emails the same day. If you interviewed in the afternoon, the next morning is fine. Make certain that each email is distinct from the others using the notes you took during the conversations. So that was it for the first um, for the first, I guess you want, you can say like article with the tips. Um, common ways to prepare for interview from sources across the web. Prepare answers to common questions. Research the company, know your values, and ask questions. Always ask questions. Read and review the job description. Research the company and interviewer. Print hard copies of your resume. Monitor your body language. What are your salary expectations? Um, let's pull up another article. 20 tips for great job interviews. Some of this stuff's gonna like be repetitive, obviously. Um, <coughs> 20 
uh, this is with Express. Um, 20 tips for great job interviews. What to ace your next interview and land an open job you've been seeking? Here are 20 tips to help you prepare. From researching the company to handling certain key interview questions, make sure you make a great impression and ace your next job interview by following these 20 steps. Research the industry and company. Um, an interviewer may ask how you perceive this company's position in its industry, who the firm's competitors are, what its competitive advantages are, and how it should best go forward. For this reason, avoid trying to thoroughly research a dozen different industries. Focus your job search on just a few industries instead. So some of these tips are actually different, like have different information. That's cool. Clarify your selling points and the reasons you want the job. Prepare to go into every interview with three to five key selling points in mind, such as what makes you the best candidate for the job. Have an example of each selling point prepared. I have good communication skills. For example, I persuaded an entire group to. And be prepared to tell the interviewer why you want that job, including the what interests you about it. What rewards it offers, what that you will find valuable, and what abilities it requires that you process. If an interviewer doesn't think you're re really really interested in the job, he or she won't give you an offer no matter how good you are. Three, anticipate the interviewer's concerns and reservations. There are always more candidates for positions than there are openings, so interviewers look for ways to screen people out. Put yourself in their shoes and ask yourself why they might not want to hire you. I don't have this, I'm not that, etc. Then prepare your defense. I know you may be look, thinking that I might not be the best fit for this position because blank, but you should know that blank reason the interviewer should be overly concerned. Prepare for common interview questions. Every how to interview book has a list of a hundred or more common interview questions. You might wonder just how long these interviews are if there are that many common questions. So how do you prepare? Pick any list and think about qu which questions you're most likely to encounter given your age and status. About to graduate? Looking for a summer internship? Then prepare your answers so you won't have to fumble for them during the actual interview. Line up your questions for the interviewer. Come into the interview with some intelligent questions for the interviewer to, that demonstrate your knowledge of the company as well as your serious intent. Interviewers might, interviewers always ask if you have any questions and no matter what, you should have one or two ready. If you say no, not really, he or she may conclude that you're not all that interested in the job or the company. A good all-purpose question is, if you could design the ideal candidate for this position from the ground up, what would he or she be like? What? If you're having series, uh, having a series of interviews with the same company, you can use some of your prepared questions with each person you meet. For example, what do you think is the best thing about working here? And what kind of person would you most like to see fill this position? Then try to think of one or two others during each interview itself. So we're going to go ahead and break off from the article and take a quick break and then be right back to finish it. So I am back with hopefully the rest of the article. The article. I got that crackhead energy slightly still. Uh oh oh. That just made me think of animal crackers in my soup. Watching them go loop de loop. Animal crackers in my soup. Definitely still got that cracker energy. 
<laughs> practice, practice, practice. It's one thing to come prepared with a mental answer to a question like, oh, why should we hire you? It's another challenge entirely to say it out loud in a confident and convincing way. The first time you try it, you'll sound garbled and confused, no matter how clear your thoughts are in your own mind. Do it another 10 times and you'll sound a lot smoother and more articulate. <clears throat> that crackhead energy is definitely still there. But you shouldn't do your practicing when you're on stage with a recruiter. Rehearse before you go to the interview. The best way to rehearse, get two friends and practice interviewing each other in a round robin. The heck? One person acts as the observer and the other interviewee gets feedback from both the in observer and the interviewer. Go for four or five rounds switching roles as you go. Another idea, but definitely second best, is to tape record your answer and then play it back to see where you need to improve. Whatever you do, make sure your practice consists of speaking aloud. Rehearsing your answer in your mind won't cut it. Score a success in the first five minutes. Some studies indicate that interviewers make up their minds about candidates in the first five minutes of the interview and then spend the rest of the interview looking for things to confirm that decision. So what can you do in those five minutes to get through the gate? Come in with energy and enthusiasm and express your appreciation for the interviewer's time. Remember, she may be seeing a lot of other candidates that day and may be tired from the flight in, so bring in that energy. Also, start off with a positive comment about the company. Something like, I've really been looking forward to this meeting. I think blank is doing great work in blank and I'm really excited for the prospect of being able to contribute. Get on the same side as the interviewer. Many interviewers view job interviews as adversarial. Candidates are going to try to pry an offer out of the interviewer and the interviewer's job is to hold on to it. Your job is to transform this tug of war into a relationship in which you're both on the same side. You could say something as simple as, I'm happy to have the chance to learn more about your company and to let you learn more about me so we can see if this is going to be a good match or not. I always think that the worst thing that can happen is to be hired into a job that's wrong for you, then nobody's happy. Yeah. Be assertive and take responsibility for the interview. Perhaps out of the effort to be polite, some usually assertive candidates become overly passive during job interviews. But politeness doesn't equal passivity. An interview is like it, any other conversation. It's a dance in which you and a partner move together, both responding to the other. Don't make the mistake of just sitting there waiting for the interviewer to ask you about that Nobel Peace Prize you won. It's your responsibility to make sure he walks away knowing your key settings point. Selling points. Yeah. Yes. Go queen. Shut the fuck up. Okay. This crackhead energy needs an end. Or does it? Nah, it don't. It don't. I'm really liking it. Yes. Be ready to handle illegal and in a what? <laughs> Not me singing something that's like what? Be ready to handle illegal and inappropriate questions. Uh uh, I am working there. Interview questions about your race, age, gender, religion, marital status, and sexual orientation are inappropriate and in many ways illegal. Don't be asking me about my. Personal life. Nevertheless, you may get one or more of them. If you do, 
you have a couple of options. You can simply answer with a question. I'm not sure how that's relevant to my application. Or you can try to answer the question behind the question. I don't know whether I'll decide to have children in the near future, but if you're wondering if I'll be leaving my job for an extended period of time, I can say that I'm very committed to my career and frankly, can't imagine giving it up. Make your selling points clear. If a tree falls in the forest and nobody is there to hear it, you gonna make a sound? More important, if you communicate your selling points during a job interview and the interviewer doesn't get it, did you score? On this question, the answer is clear, no. So don't bury your selling points in long-winded stories. Instead, tell the interviewer what your selling point is first, then give the example. Think positive. No one likes a complainer. So don't dwell on negative experiences during an interview. Even if the interviewer asks to you point blank, what courses have you liked least? Or what did you like least about your previous job? Don't answer the question. Or more specifically, don't answer it as it's been asked. Instead, say something like, well, actually, I found something about all of my classes that I've liked. For example, although I found blank class to be very tough, I like the fact that blank positive point about the class or I liked blank a previous job quite a bit. Although now I know that I really want to blank new job. Close on a positive note. If a salesman came to you and demonstrated his product, then thank you for your time and walk out the door. What did he do wrong? He didn't ask you to buy it. If you get to the end of an interview and think you'd really like that job, ask for it. Tell the interviewer that you'd really, really like the job, that you were excited about it before the interview and are even more excited now, and that you are convinced you'd like to work there. What's up with this cracked energy? I don't know. If there are two equally good candidates at the end of the search, you and somebody else, the interviewer will think you are more likely to accept the offer and thus may be more inclined to make an offer to you. Eh. Eh. Even better, take what you've learned about yourself from your MyPath career assessment and use it to explain why you think this is the job for you. I've done some careful career self-assessment and I know that I'm most interested in blank one or two of your most important career interest themes and correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like that this position will allow me to express those interests. I also know that I'm not most motivated by blank two or three of my most important motivators from your my path assessment. And I have the sense that if I do well, I could get those rewards in this position. Finally, I know that my strongest abilities are blank. Two or three of your strongest abilities from your My Path assessment. And I see those as being the abilities you most need for this position. If you follow this tip, you'll be A. Asking for the job, B. Explaining why you think it's a good match, and C. Displaying your thoughtfulness and maturity, and D. Further disarming the tug of war dynamic that interviewers anticipate, you'll be making the strongest possible close and that's worth a lot. So before finishing the article off, I will go ahead and take another break and be right back. So back with that cracky energy. Sorry. It's the rest of the article and the outro. Bring a copy of your resume to every interview. <coughs> Have a copy of your resume when you 
with you, when you go to every interview, you, oh, 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 if the interviewer has misplaced his or her copy, you'll save a lot of time and embarrassment on the interviewer's part if you can just pull your extra copy out and hand it over. Don't worry about sounding canned. Some people are concerned that if they rehearse their answers, they'll sound canned or overly parsed or glib. During the interview, don't worry. If you're well prepared, you'll sound smooth and articulate, not canned. And if you're not so well prepared, the anxiety of the situation will eliminate any canned quality. Make the most of the tell me about yourself question. Many interviewers begin interviews with this question. So how should you respond? You could go into a story about where you were born, what your parents do, how many brothers and sisters and cats and dogs you have, and that's okay. But would you rather have the interviewer writing down what kind of dog you have? Or why the company should hire you? Consider responding to this question with something like, well, obviously I could tell you about lots of things about myself. And if I'm missing what you want, please let me know. But the three things I think are most important for you to know about me are blank, which are your selling points. I can expand on those. A little if you'd like, interviewers will always say, sure, go ahead. Then you say, well, regarding the first point, which is when you give your example. And when I was working for blank company, I example for up another selling point, etc. This strategy enables you to focus the first 10 to 15 minutes of the interview on all of your key selling points. The tell me about yourself question is a golden opportunity. Don't miss it. Yeah. Yeah. N A S A. Da 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 da. Speak the right body language. Dress appropriately. Make eye contact. Give a firm handshake. Have good posture. Speak clearly. And don't wear perfume or cologne. Sometimes interview locations are small rooms that may lack good air circulation. You want the interviewer paying attention to your job qualifications, not passing out because you've come in wearing Chanel number no. five and the candidate before you was doused with brut. And the two have mixed to form a poisonous gas that results in you not getting an offer. Be ready for behavior-based interviews. One of the most common interview styles today is to ask people to describe experiences they have had and demonstrate behaviors that the company thinks are important for a particular position. You might be asked to talk about a time when you made an unpopular decision, displayed a high level of persistence, or made a decision under time pressure and with limited Enter information, for example. Step one is to anticipate the behaviors this hiring manager is likely to be looking for. Step two is to identify at least one example of when you demonstrated each behavior. Step three is to prepare a story for each example. Many people recommend using SAR, Situation, Action, Result, as a model for the story. Step four is to practice telling the story. Also make sure to review your resume before the interview with this kind of format in mind. This can help you to remember examples of behaviors you may not have anticipated in advance. Send a thank you notes. Write a thank you note after every interview. Type each note on paper or send them by email depending on the interview's, interviewer's preference. Customize your notes by referring, referring 
specifically to what you and the interviewer discussed. For example, I was particularly excited about blank or interested by or glad to hear what you should uh, what you said about handwritten notes might be better if you're thanking a personal contact for helping you in your job search or if the company you're interviewing with is based in Europe whatever method you choose notes should be sent within 48 hours of the interview to write a good thank you note you'll need to take time after each interviewer after each interview to jot down a few things about what the interviewer said also write down what you could have done better in the interview and make adjustments before you head off for your next interview 20 and the most important don't give up let's drink some water always drink water If you've had if you've had a bad interviewer interview for a job that you truly think would be great would be a great fit for you, not just something you want badly, don't give up. Write a note, send an email, or call the interviewer to let him or her know that you think you did a poor job of communicating why you think this job would be a good match. Reiterate what you have to offer the company and say that you'd like an opportunity to contrib contribute. Whether this strategy will get you a job offer depends on the company and on you. But one thing's for sure, if you don't try, your chances are exactly zero. We've seen this approach work on numerous occasions and we encourage you to give it that last shot. So that's it for the articles. I'm gonna go ahead and stretch. Stretch. So, if you guys want to uh, send in your interview stories, you can text or leave a voicemail to 561-320-7085 or DM First Chances with Chance on Instagram. And if you guys are watching the video, you can comment down below. Again, text or leave a voicemail to 561-320-7085 or DM First Chances with Chance on Instagram. Also, comment down below if you guys are watching the video portion of this episode. And I love you guys. Bye.